Tada uđer. Te na tato ka toj te fari. Te na fari. Mr. Chairman, members of uh, both the National and Māori parties have deliberately tried to disrupt the flow of my corridor, particularly during Part 3 of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill. So as we turn to Part 4, I look to there being perhaps a little more understanding and accepting of the fact that issues that I raise during this bill I don't raise because of any personal animosity towards them, but because of a genuine and wide, widely held belief that this bill is not in the best interests of the Māori people or the Māori party or indeed parliament itself. And as I turn to discussing part four of this marine and coastal area bill, Mr Chairman, I pledge not to raise internal Māori party caucus issues nor to personalise the relationship between members of the Māori party caucus and ministers of the national government because this debate should not be about what one person may or may not have said to one another or to another in the privacy of a caucus meeting, nor should it be about the relationship between MPs and the South. Even though such unsubstantiated trivialities were levelled against me during the debate over Part 3 of this bill last night. Mr Chairman, this debate should in fact be about the principles underpinning this, the legislation that the House is discussing. So, as I turn to Part 4 of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill, I will, as I have done in all previous speaking opportunities during this debate, try to focus on the issues highlighted by this bill and the public statements of relevant players in the development of this legislation, because Māori people deserve to know exactly how they will be affected by the decisions of those parties and persons promoting this legislation. And, Mr Chairman, because I am a member of Parliament elected to represent the specific interests of Māori, it is that particular area that I intend to focus my comments on. So, Mr Chairman, if I might be allowed, I would like to begin my contribution to this debate by asking whether or not the Māori Party knows that the legally prescribed detail as found in clauses 94 to 97 of Part 4 of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill and other legislation like it in the field of treaty settlements and the oversight, governance and management of natural resources is setting a dangerous trend for Māori by forcing us into the legal environment where the value of traditional Māori principles or kaupapa Māori will be determined and legal precedents and benchmarks is established which will impact on those principles forevermore. And does the Māori Party realise that allowing the courtrooms to become the battleground for determining the ripeness or otherwise of kaupapa Māori, as noted in various clauses found in Part 4 of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill, is detrimental to the principles themselves and to the world view that they represent? And will that make the Māori Party reconsider the position that they announced the other day, Mr Chairman, that this bill is in the House on our initiative? Make no bones, this is a Māori Party bill. We are pleased to stand here in support. And does the Māori Party realise that by so doing, they are sanctioning the legal capture of kaupapa Māori as found in this Marine and Coastal Area Bill, thereby limiting the effectiveness of those principles by tying them to legal concepts which themselves are derived from a society that, is, that has over time developed into the resource-exploiting, consumer-dominated society that we see today? a society which in many ways is at conflict with the Māori worldview that Kopapa Māori are based on. And will realising that they have actually done that make the Māori Party think about withdrawing their view that this bill is in the House on our initiative, this is a Māori Party bill? And does the Māori Party realise that by giving their support to clauses 97 to 103 of Part 4 of the Marine and Coastal Area Bill, they are endorsing government's attempts to codify those principles that I've already mentioned in a way that our tūpuna would not agree and that our people will not accept. And that by supporting this marine and coastal area bill, the Māori Party is setting the stage for decades of litigation as Māori seek to reclaim ground lost through the passage of this bill. And if they do realise the mistake they have made, will it help them to think about dumping that position that they announced the other day that this is a Māori Party bill. 
And does the Māori Party realise, Mr Chairman, that by giving their support to the many clauses as, as noted under Part 4 of the Marine... Mr Chairman? Mr Chairman? Mr Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill, they are setting the stage for the spectacular loss of Māori connection to the foreshore and seabed by forcing Māori into the High Court where $100,000 is the price of an opening address, half a million is the cost of progress, and unfortunate rulings are the order of the day. <laughs> and when they realise how this bill forces Māori into the court of great cost and no return, do you think that they might actually disown the position that they announced the other day, that this is a Māori Party bill and we are pleased to stand here in support? And does the Māori Party know that by their support of aspects of the law as outlined in specific clauses under Part 4 of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill, they may be signalling the end of all treaty claims to the foreshore and seabed, because once this bill is passed, the foreshore and seabed will no longer be in Crown hands, and that it will become common space owned by no one and therefore unable to be claimed by Māori? And when they realise how this bill will put an end to all treaty claims to the foreshore and seabed, do you suppose it might finally make the Māori Party wake up and say, perhaps we made the wrong decision when we announced the other day that this is a Māori Party bill and that we are pleased to stand here in support. And does the Māori Party know that their support of Clause 105 of this Marine and Coastal Area Bill, where Māori are required to prove customary title, is inconsistent with the position widely held by Māori throughout the country that Māori should not have to go to court to prove what the whole world already knows anyway, that Māori were here first, why do we have to prove it? And will the Māori Party finally accept that that position, that this bill is a Māori Party bill, and we are pleased to be here to support it, is simply untenable to Māori and unacceptable to all those who support the principle of justice? Mr Chairman, I began my speech by saying that I hope that those from the Māori Party and the National Party who have been, heck who have been heckling me, but not today, while I was speaking, understand and accept that the issues I raised during this bill I don't raise because of any personal animosity, but because of a genuine and widely held belief that this bill is not in the best interest of the Māori people or the Māori Party or indeed Parliament itself. Mr Chairman, the arrogance of the government in refusing to participate in this debate is widely noted by all New Zealanders. The decision by the Māori Party to adopt the same attitude is duly noted by all Māori as well. Tū te ao Māori, tū te ranga tiratanga, tū motu hake te nata to katoa.